Super N Expo is coming to your area. Mark your calendars May 18th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. We have some amazing authors, some amazing business owners that's going to be sharing about their brand. We have some workshop facilitators that's going to be coming out. They're going to be teaching on branding, marketing, and networking. I want you to plan to be in the building, to be educated, empowered, and encouraged. Come out, support. At Wings of Transformation Publishing, we are committed to helping our authors reach their goals and pursue their dreams of becoming published authors. We work closely with each author to ensure a successful publishing experience. And we are dedicated to helping them tell their stories in the most meaningful and impactful ways. We look forward to putting you on the path to writing your book. Well, hey, 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 y'all. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. And welcome, welcome. Today is March the 1st, y'all. It is a new month, new opportunities. I tell you, if you haven't received your marching orders, then it's time for you to move out of the way. I want y'all to get, get, get what March was dropped in my spirit and what that thing means. I want y'all to get it. Before the end of March, I want y'all to get it and know that you got purpose. Know that it's not a someone in your circle of influence. So go ahead, share this out. And I'm going to drop these nuggets. I'm going to drop these nuggets while we get ready to bring up our guests. Y'all, I'm excited. For those that may be tuning in for the first time and may not know who I am, I am the visionary of the Crew Podcast. I am also the visionary of AA. LAC, which is the African American Author Literacy Awareness Campaign and Aspiring Authors Magazine, where I truly believe in um, bringing brown authors and brown creative minds together all over this world and giving them an outlet to be able to share and to thrive. Y'all, that word March, and we are going into, we are marching in March, y'all, and we're going to march our way straight on through March. And how are we going to do that? We're going to move out of our own way and allow God to his way season. We're gonna align with the word. We're gonna we, we we're gonna allow him to reset, renew, and restore us. And we're gonna be willing to change. We're gonna be willing to be that change that we want to see in this world, y'all. And we're gonna do that in a healed spirit, y'all. Heal. We're not gonna walk around with hurt because hurt people hurt. And we're not trying to hurt nobody. We're trying to be healed in this season, y'all. I'm excited because we have some amazing individuals. We have now 58 amazing individuals, queens, that's going to be sharing their brands. They're going to be sharing how they are creating and leaving a legacy. Because, see, some of us, we're breaking generational gaps, y'all, because we have decided that we are going to be that change. So, y'all, I'm going to move out the way. And I'm going to allow my guest to come up. She's going to introduce herself. And then she's going to tell you how she is creating a legacy. We're going to bring up. Welcome, welcome, hey, welcome. Hey, hey. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Angela, for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Happy Women's History Month to all the women listening right now. Um, this is really wonderful to enjoy this month that's made just for us. So my name is MBS Malay. It stands for Naturally Beautiful and Sophisticated. I'm trying to think where I want to start to tell you guys who I am. So I am a singer. I'm a curator, which is like pretty much an event coordinator. So I've been hosting an open mic for the past five years, almost going on six years this coming May, on May 14th. Um, I do a lot of events for the community uh, as an open mic, but I also do a lot of events individually as an individual artist um wow yeah yeah so i do a lot of things i also act i have a bunch of movies coming out i do a lot of local work and i do have a bunch of movies that are coming out soon on tv and stuff that i can't really tell you guys the titles to them just yet but yeah i have a lot of stuff going on right now <laughs> 
And I'm super excited to talk to you guys about it today. Wow, that 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 <laughs> is exciting. Thank you. Wow, that is exciting. And <laughs> to think that, you know, I, I'm telling you, there's some there's some beautiful princesses listening or maybe tuned in or they see this. And I, I, I'm just excited because when I was coming up, the all the opportunities that I see a lot of my brown sisters and brothers experiencing as far as acting and singing and just being able to be creative. We, we didn't have a lot of those opportunities. And then where we could be, where, where we can be in a positive life, you know, a, a lot of the opportunities that they wanted to avail us, they were not in the positive life. So to be able to see um, you giving back to your community like you do in the events that you put on, I know you say you do a lot of community events. What are some of the type of community events um, you put on and the theme around these events? I'm very excited to tell you about that. Okay. So there's an open mic that I've been hosting called Speak and Eat Open Mic that I started on May 14, 2018. I started this open mic basically because around this time I was running from my own city. I moved to West Virginia because I felt like if I went somewhere else, I can find something better because I couldn't find anything here. And I feel like a lot of people go through that same thing. They go somewhere else to find something better. And then I realized when I went out there, all the different things that I started doing um, was to get out of the pain that I was feeling inside. I'm just, I'm really not a type of person to try to find a rebound or something to replace a feeling. I would rather use my craft and try to learn more about myself in order to heal from it. Cause like you were saying earlier, hurt people hurt people. So I had to find another something to replace that. So when I went out to West Virginia and I went out to all these events and everything, I started realizing like, you know, maybe if I implement something like that in my city, something that's consistent and everything, then I won't be feeling this way anymore. And I felt like I wasn't the only one that was feeling this way. So I started hosting these open mics on Waltham Avenue in Springfield, Massachusetts. So Waltham Avenue is, <laughs> if you know what Springfield, Massachusetts is, you know what I'm talking about. It's just like a really skinny alleyway. You, you would be kind of scared to go over there. So when I first started it, I was doing open mics in a warehouse. And we did it with like folding chairs and everything. So I did it there for about three months. And then I moved to Port Richards, which was G Geraldine's a few years after that. And I went there for about five years. And we did the open mics there every other Monday. So open mics would include singing, dancing, poetry. Sometimes magicians came out and did magic tricks. We have comedians that come out. Just random people that just do some of everything. Sometimes people came out and did motivational speaking. But... Um, pretty much any, my events pretty much just surrounds any type of crafts that you would do. Sometimes artists just came and did freestyle paintings while people were on the stage and performing. Shout out to Karen Bernard because she was one of the main ones that was doing that. So yeah, that's pretty much the events that I throw. Um, one of the main ones that I do also do after the Speak and Eat Open Mics, I started hosting a showcase called Massachusetts versus CT, which is not really a verse, like a competition. It's really something that I use to bridge the gaps together because it's uh, every time people come out, it's just Massachusetts artists and then I do a CT artist. I just go back and forth and pretty much everybody just learns how to come together and just you know support each other. So that's one event I started. And then we started one and Hartford at Vibes Uptown called Head to Head. And that one was every Friday. And that one was pretty much surrounding the same thing, but it was a competition that the audience voted for. So I set something for a bunch of different events. And then we also did uh, Speak and Eat Dance and Poetry Music that we was hosting in New Haven. So yeah, that's pretty much how my events go. You know, I pretty much let everybody get involved in whatever I do. So, where where do you see yourself in about 10 or 15 years from now um in in your passion in, in your in your lane where, where do you see yourself how do you see yourself moving thinking about that question right now in about 10 years i see myself at least owning a couple of buildings instead of 
hosting events and buildings that are owned by other people and having to deal with other things around keeping that together. I want to have, I'm going to have, I'm going to have my own buildings and I'm gonna make sure I have more than one of them in different locations because I know that this is something that is needed for our community. Cause like, like you said, this is stuff that people look for. And these are things that people literally have to search a hole in the wall for, you know, somebody to know somebody, or you got to see somebody share it. I want, I want everybody to see speak and eat how I see it in 10 years when people are uh, talking about the Apollo, they automatically know what the Apollo is. And I, honestly, it brings a whole bunch of emotions and me even thinking about something like this because in 10 years, I, re I really see this business that I'm building for the community going so far as to having more than two or three buildings. Like at one point I felt like we was gonna be like the next Dunkin' Donuts just being spread everywhere. Just because I know that this event is more peace than what people can even see yet. Cause like you said, how are people gonna know about stuff if I'm not talking about it and not telling them about it? So I just feel like the more word of mouth that goes around talking about speaking in a different piece that we create and how people feel when they come out, it doesn't just feel like an open mic that you're coming to. You come there and people that don't even know you walk up to you and talk to you like, you're their family. Cause these are people that have been here since the year 2018. These are not people that just walking in just to see what's going on. These are people that's walking up and they wanna network and they wanna see how to collaborate in the future. This is people that want to know how to find other people that do different things that they do. They want similar people that's doing similar things to grow. And that's all I see speaking of being, just a place that people come to to find something better for themselves and to find some type of creation of peace inside themselves that they can tell the next person about. Oh, guys, you don't know about speaking to me? Oh, there's one that's 30 minutes down the road. Let's go. Or people that's from the next town over or something like that. Oh, if we go to New Jersey, oh, I heard that there's a speaking out there. That's where I see speaking in 10 years. I see speaking being the next Apollo or the next American Idol or whatever people look at these shows and automatically know about something. I just, I see it as something everybody's gonna know about and gonna come to to make sure that they can grow and be a better person, be a better creative. That's where I really want it to be. That's what it's going to be in 10 years or less. So yes, that felt good. Wow. <laughs> to get out. That felt what good to get out. What are some things that you would, you would like to, what, what are some things that you would like for people to remember you buy well what would you like for your legacy to be because um of course it is women history month and it's all about us leaving a legacy and creating a legacy and that is definitely what you are doing you are creating uh, uh you're, you're creating something that people can be a part of people can you know share with their families and pass down for generations to come so what 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 is it that you want people to take away um, from your legacy? When I am no longer here on this earth, the type of footprints that I would like to leave behind is the same type of footprints that people like Martin Luther King left behind. Somebody that came along just to make a change, didn't look for any type of benefit for themselves, but something more for the community, something more to bring people together, to, to stop looking at people and just automatically judging them and not knowing their story. I want people to look at me and just be like, cause everybody that knows me, they know I don't really care about what anybody thinks about me. I'm fully 100% myself and I'm fully 100% a person that stands and lives in my truth. And I be me fully and I be as happy as I could be with it no matter what pain I'm going through. So anytime somebody thinks about me, if I'm gone, I want them to think about that. I want them to think, Every time they came around that I always try to be a positive light and redirect any type of negativity that came into their lives and to show them how to redirect that type of person to create peace and bring people together and to help forgive while I learn how to forgive at the same time. So that's how I want people to look at me like a peacemaker. Yeah. Wow. 
you're definitely a creative and you're definitely a um, inspiration um, to many. Um, I, I thank you for being a trailblazer and allowing your creative to come forth and um, to allow it to flow because a lot of people will not allow their creative side to come forth. They would like to bury it and, and keep it hidden because they feel like it, 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 it shows a vulnerable side of them or it shows a weakness or it shows a side of them that, you know, just allow you to express. Um, so I, I thank you for not only being a, a, a beacon of light for people that are, are looking to be creative um, and, and not having a hang up because a, a lot of people will make you feel a certain way when you want to do stuff. And um, yeah. I, I thank you for providing the space for the creative. Um, you're definitely paving the way for, for many that want to be creative. Um, I, I listened to you and I listened to something that you said that you you always be yourself and you, you love yourself for who you are. And um, pretty much you're not trying to please nobody because you're comfortable with who you are. And yes. I, I was listening to a friend of mine. Um, she loves poetry and she's getting a little older. But one of her things were um, she was really good at writing um, erotica um, poetry. And um, the older she got, you know, she felt like, you know, people were, you know, treating her differently or, you know, making her feel bad because um, that's what she was doing, you know. And, yeah. and like I was tell telling her, I think we had a conversation the other day and I was telling her, you know, a lot of people are afraid to even express that folks, express those thoughts and those feelings. So for somebody that write erotica, and willing to express that, um, and express some things that other people want to express. You know, I, I, I'm grateful for those people that are comfortable in their skin mm -hmm. and that are willing to step outside their box and willing to not even care what other people think. Um, and it's creatives like that in that space that we need. So I'm grateful for you. Um, Thank you. Before we um, close this segment tonight, I definitely want to about your books um you yes. mentioned that you had seven books yes i do i have seven books yes that yes I yes yes um yes. any poetry books yes any poetry books yes most of my po most of my books are poetry books um one of them that i'm looking at right now feelings uh let me see if i can get it in the camera feelings this one i released the top of last year end of 22 i think it was this is one of my poetry books. So this poetry book, I put um, short poems. I'm sorry, I put short stories. I put poems. I put some of my random thoughts, uh, why I wrote certain poetry. Because in my last poetry books, I was like, you know, I feel like I want to just like, I, I usually like people to interpret things on their own, like a painting or something. But I feel like sometimes people really do want to get in an author's mind. So I was like, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put a little bit of my thoughts inside of this and explain to people with short stories and fix um, some of my um, short stories were fictional. So I wanted to like just like create stuff to give people a certain idea of things. Like That's what type of writer I am, though. I'm just like the type of writer to just get people right. to see a story for, from a different type of view. Like um, that was my first book. This is my first book. It's called I've Been Here Before. This book is, is not a poetry book. It's a mystery book. It's about a girl that was murdered and reincarnated as a boy and remembers his entire past life and spends his new life seeking revenge. This book, I basically wrote so people can uh, basically see another story to why people decide to make certain decisions in their life or whatever. Like with my mind, like I'm just, I don't like when people just like judge people or anything and just not know their story, because I'm just the type of person that feels like people are here to be judged. Yes, but not judged in negative type of way. This is their life. They should do whatever they want to do. But like, if you see somebody, like judge them for the good person that they are. Like, I don't know. So that's what I create books for. That's what I make poetry for and everything. This is what I do to get out of my pain. Uh, everybody uses individuals and people and hurt other people so they can get through stuff. 
I'm the type of person that learns, I learned how to play uh, the guitar or the piano, or mm. I write these books so I can get away from that pain. That's why. So those are some of them, but yeah, I have a bunch of poetry books. <laughs> yeah. And Naked Words is one of my poetry books too. Naked Words. And where can we get them at? Um, these books are, I have some hard copies or you can get them on Amazon. There are some available on Barnes and Noble. Only my, I'm sorry. What'd you say? I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, I was just saying if we wanted to purchase one, I think you were saying Barnes and Noble. Oh, all right. So if you type my name, if you go on Amazon and type MBS Malay, all my books will pop up. Or if you type MBS Malay books on Google, all my books will pop up and show you all the different platforms that these books are on. Um, the main areas that people go to purchase my books is Amazon. Or if they see me in person, I do have some books sometimes in person. Or Barnes & Noble. If you type my name on Barnes & Noble, they'll show you what they have available on Barnes & Noble. So they're available everywhere. And they're even available on Kindle if you want to go on Kindle and look for it. So, yeah. Those are my books, girl. I'm so excited about them. I got to release some new ones. So if we wanted to follow you, if we wanted to check you out, um, where could we follow you at? <laughs> what platforms do you use? I use all the platforms. I just deactivated my Twitter. Don't ask why. But yeah, I am MVS Malay everywhere. That's on Instagram, Snapchat, that's Facebook. I even got a TikTok. So on TikTok, I'm a clown. So, you know, you can follow me on TikTok too. MVS Malay. Yeah, that's me. Wow. So, what can we look forward to? to seeing coming up so I'm sorry you're breaking up say that one more time what can what can we expect from you soon I know you say you got some I, you can't tell us about the movie because um oh, you yes. got some movies coming out I know we can expect that do you have yes any poetry do you have anything that we can look forward to um, seeing and supporting you because this is what we want to do. We want to help support you. We want to help be around when those movies come out. So after everybody go over and follow you and make sure that they are connected to your platforms, then we can look forward to all of the new stuff that you have coming out. I know you got movies coming out. Do you have any new books coming yes. out? You, you got any yes. new um, events that you're putting together? <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, I do have a um, I did just release, um, get some news yesterday from Rob Santos that our show is going to be coming out on, they're going to be doing the premiere on April 14th. So we should be having a flyer for that soon. So that's a show that I'm in. Um, on April 17th, I do have a show at, at Miss Thelma's in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, that's going to be me and my band. We're going to be performing for two hours. So I really hope that we could get some people to come out. Oh my God, it's gonna be a great night. I love performing with the band. Shout out to Jero and Trevor and Alton because it's gonna be super dope. So April 17th, I really hope we can get some people. It's gonna be at seven o'clock PM at Miss Thelma's. I will put the, the location inside of the, the chat. We did not get the flyer just yet, but that's coming. On March 28th, I have a Massachusetts versus CT poker event where people are betting on their performances in Ansonia, Connecticut. That will be located at Legacy Lounge at 232 Main Street in Ansonia, Connecticut. Um, oh my God, there's so much stuff. I do have a book that's coming out. It's going to be called I'm Here. It's going to be part three to this book because there's two of this, these books out right now. So I'm going to have a, a, this one is the mystery one. So part three is going to be coming out soon. I'm going to put all three parts together so everybody can just read it all at once. Um, let me see. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff with a brain clutter. Oh, let me see. Let me see. I'm gonna have to put some stuff in the comments. It's just like so much stuff being thrown at me right now. But yeah, I got all of that coming. <laughs> but I do have some movies out. If anybody wants to watch anything, 
I wow. think a couple of the movies are on. Well, you definitely um, can tag me. Yes. Well, you definitely need to tag me in some of your stuff so that I can share it on the platform. So those that want to, you know, connect with you, can connect with you. Um, just make sure you tag me. I will. And, um, yes. We'll make sure we share it out. Um, we love to stay connected with those that come home and share on the platform. So um, please, um, I, I want to thank you for stopping by and just creating a, a, a place for, in, for creative minds and individuals to come and be their creative selves. So thank you thank for you. being a history maker. Um, you are definitely um, being a, um, you are creating and leaving a legacy. You're being a trailblazer and um I salute you. We thank you thank for um, what you're doing. Thank you so much. And um, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, just keep doing what you're doing. That uh, We appreciate you. We appreciate thank you. you. So is there anything that you would like to leave with the audience, those that are tuned in before we leave? Um, you, the floor is yours. Last two minutes is yours um, to share what you'd like to share before we close. Oh, sure. Well, first of all, I would like to say once again, happy Women's History Month to every woman listening. Thank you guys so much for existing. This world would not be us without women. So you guys are amazing. Thank God for women. Thank God for you, Angela. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you to Kaixa Rodriguez for connecting me with you because she's amazing and she always makes sure I'm taken care of. Shout out to my grandmother and my mom. And I really hope that everybody 100% gets comfortable with themselves so that we could be a better place, you know? Love each other, and I love you guys. Much love and peace and energy and light. Yeah, that's all I got. Wow, that's definitely amazing, and what a way to end the show, y'all. I tell you, she definitely was amazing tonight. What a way to kick off our Women History Thank Month. Um, the first night. I want y'all to make sure that you join me back here tomorrow night of March, y'all. We're going to be here every night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be sharing some amazing queens that's decided to create and leave a legacy. They decided to be trailblazers. They have decided to be the change that they want to see in this world. So hats off to each and every one of them and of influence because you never know what the next person may be in need of. Y'all, I love y'all. And guess what? There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. I'll see you guys back <laughs> here tomorrow night. Be blessed. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs>